Hello everyone and welcome. This is my full length terrain generation tutorial series where we'll be going uh, step by step through making the terrain generation that we saw in the last video. If you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. Uh, this also assumes that you know everything from the video before that about uh, just basic Perlin noise and uh, working with arrays to make positions. Um, but in this video, we're going to be starting by making triangles because that is the first thing that we need to do in order to make triangle terrain we need to know how can we make triangles so here I have three parts labeled A, B, and C and they're just here to visualize uh, three positions now there's a lot of math behind positioning and rotating triangles to fit three different uh, positions so we'll be using this uh, github article to actually help us out it's uh, called 3D Triangles by Ego Moose and it basically just explains uh, how to decompose a triangle and find the longest side and figure out edge lengths and put them into a uh, C-frame which is also called a rotation matrix basically figures all that out and puts it into a function called draw 3D triangle and if we scroll all the way down we get this optimized version that we'll actually be using so uh, if you want to read this on your own go ahead uh, but we'll just be copying uh, this section of code right here and we'll be going over to our studio and putting this in service script service in just a script for now and the only things that I'm going to change are uh, I don't want to pass in so the input parameters are a B and C which are three um, three vector three positions um, these two w1 and w2 are wedges that you can pass in if you want to and the parent is where those wedges will be parented to. I only care about these first three. So uh, my wedge one and wedge two will always just be a clone of this wedge. And my parent will just always be workspace. So I just get rid of these three. And I just have to go down to parent and change that to workspace. And same thing for w2.parent. Uh, this now has to be localized. Same with w2. Um, it will always be just a clone of the wedge so I can get rid of the W1 or and the W2 or and there's a little typo right here when you change edge to it's supposed to be wedge uh, and that is of course in reference to uh, the variable right here so that's what my draw 3d triangle will now look like I can go ahead and drop a couple lines and then minimize this function so we don't have to uh, worry about that anymore and we can start using it now all we need to do is, in order to use our draw 3D triangle, we need to get three positions. Luckily I have three parts right here. So let me get the three positions of those three parts. Local A, workspace.a.position, and then same for B and same for C. Like so. Now I can call that function. And when I run this, I should get my first triangle. Now we have our first triangle. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit more fun. Uh, we're going to recreate this GIF right here by having it continuously uh, conform to three positions as they move around in runtime. So what I'll do is I'll index that, or indent it rather, and put it into a while loop. I'll give it a weight and since we're making this over and over and over we also need to destroy uh, the wedges that this makes uh, when every time it makes a triangle um, remember we have input for the three um, positions but we also have output which is the two wedges that we get back to make that triangle so we give it to the function but we also take it so let's take those um, two wedges I call them wedge A and wedge B. And then after I wait a moment, I will go ahead and destroy wedge A and wedge B. Wedge B, destroy. Nicely done. Now if I go ahead and run this, 
should be able to move these parts and my triangle should conform to my positions in runtime. And if you can do that, then that demonstrates that you know how to make a triangle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this for now and my three positions. And let's get towards, uh, I'll delete the base plate too, since we won't need that either. Uh, we're going to be making the actual chunk now, similar to how we did ours in the very first video where we made block terrain. So uh, I'm going to make my grid size xz is equal to 3, 3. I'm just going to make a simple uh, 3 by 3 grid. And just like in that uh, block terrain video, we'll make a for loop to create a position grid with um, noise, of course, for the height. Local uh, position grid. This is a table for loop. So making a column for every X or a row, however you want to see it. And then for all the Z, make a height or a position. And grid sub X sub Z equals vector three dot new. Uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, X times five. For the height, we'll use our noise x divided by 10, z divided by 10, and z times 5 for the z. Alright, so now we have a position, uh, position grid. And uh, one thing I want to change from how we normally do it and how we're going to be doing it now is that instead of starting from 1, we're going to be starting from 0. Now, the reason that we'll be starting from zero is because when we did block terrain and we have a three by three grid, so this is our three by three grid. One, two, three, four, five, six. We get nine dots like that. And when we have a three by three grid and we were making block terrain, I just went ahead and put a block on every position like so. And you can quickly see here that if I have nine dots and I have a block for every dot, I will have nine blocks. The difference between blocks and what we'll, what we'll be doing now is that in order to make triangle terrain, I need a position, but I also need its three adjacent positions. And I'm going to be making triangles in between them and they're going to look like this. So this will, this will be one triangle and then this will be the other triangle. So I actually need four positions in order to make one, not just one. So if I have a three by three grid like this, and I'm and I try to make triangle terrain, you'll see that I actually only have one, two, three, four squares, and this is essentially a two by two grid. So instead of starting from one, I'm going to start from zero, and I'll essentially get a four by four grid. So what will happen is that I'll have an extra position uh, so that I can work with that uh, extra row. And so my 3x3s three three will be become 4x4s, four 4x4s four four will become 5x5s. Five five and then what you'll notice is that if every um, square needs four dots and I have a 4x4 four four, um, sort of grid, I should have enough to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this will not be a 4, this will be a 9. So I'll have my original 9 um, squares. So hopefully that made sense. Um, let's go back over to Studio. And I have my starting from 0. And I'll make another for loop to go ahead and create all those triangles.
And then on my for loop that actually creates those triangles, I want to iterate from zero. I want to start from zero just like I did here, but I don't want to go all the way to X and I don't want to go all the way to Z. I want to go to X minus one and Z minus one respectively. And the reason for that is because um, here, if, I, if I'm right here, I have my three adjacent dots and that and that works fine uh, but when I move over from the second one to the third one and I get to the fourth one when I get to my last column or my last row I no longer have uh, adjacent uh, I no longer have adjacent positions because I'm not making terrain here I'm just making terrain inside this area right here this three by three grid so uh, that's why we um, that's why we iterate from 0 to x minus 1 on the triangle terrain. So let me actually make those triangles. Uh, I need to get my positions in order to make my triangles, right? So um, our A will be um, position grid sub x sub z. Our B will be uh, sub x plus 1. And then our C will be uh, X sub, sub X sub Z plus one. So this is basically saying A is basically wherever we are right now. B is wherever we are, but plus one on the X axis. And C is wherever we are um, on the X, but just one over on the Z. So if I go ahead and draw that, uh, I'll ignore this. We're done using that for now. This is my um, XZ. Alright. If I go X plus 1, this is my X plus 1 Z. If I go 1 over on the Z, this is my uh, X Z plus 1. And now notice how we only have 3. That's enough to make one triangle. Uh, but we actually need two triangles. We need another triangle right here. And this part right here is obviously x plus 1, z plus 1. And I respectively call this A, uh, I believe this is B, this is C, and this is D. So this triangle right here will be a triangle A, B, C, right? A, B, and C. And then this triangle right here will be B, C, D, B, C, D. So let's go ahead and head over to Studio again. And I'll go ahead and make my fourth position, D, X plus one, Z plus one. And I'll draw my two triangles. Draw 3D triangle A, B, C, and B, C, D. All right, great, so let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, I get a little um, three by three grid of squares. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, that's because I didn't multiply this noise by anything. Let's multiply it by a very large number, like 25. So this one actually has a little bit of a bend to it. There we go. So now we have some kind of like, looks like a side of a hill type deal. Anyway, it's a three by three grid. You can see the squares in the lighting, and each one of these squares is made up of four wedges. Of course, the four wedges come from two triangles, and then each of those triangles have two wedges inside of them. So every square will have two times two wedges, which is four. So um, we have nine squares. Uh, nine times four is um, 36. So we have 36 wedges making up this um, tiny little piece of land right here. Now if we just go ahead and ramp the size up to about something a little bit more normal, a little bit more chunk size, we get a, we can make this 15 by 15 and then run it. There we have it. We should now have our first triangle terrain chunk. And it looks, um, 
shape wise it looks all right uh, but that's all this tutorial is supposed to be just making the triangles just making a single chunk and trying to get the basics of that out of the way and in the next part we should be making um, chunks generate uh, automatically as we move along and managing that so it is going to be a lot but this one I just hope was pretty easy uh, the next one will be a little bit harder but um, after that it's going to be really easy and we'll have a finished terrain hopefully uh, sometime soon so um, I'll see you guys in the next part and let me know if you have any questions uh, until the next one I'll see you guys later